It is time we start experimenting with colored clay. That's gonna take out like 80% of my painting and me and a paintbrush just don't get along all that much. You and me, babe, you and me, babe, you just nothing else. ready to go. I'm just gonna do some small batches at 5%. Now all of the other videos on this imply that you can just add stain to your clay, fire it up, and it will work. That is not true. But the process is the same. Weigh an amount of clay, add a percentage of colorant to it, and mix well. So this is what we have so far. Time to sleek. By using dry clay, you're going to get a much more consistent batch to batch. But really, but this is going to be a lot easier than trying to wedge colorant evenly into a, a, a big old ball of clay. My hands don't really want to do that. <laughs> I expected it to be more noticeable so maybe five percent isn't enough after mixing a five percent batch i decided to bump it up to ten percent because it didn't really change the color but then there was the yellow five percent may have been enough on the yellow but i didn't stir it up first they're both quarter pound baggies but clearly some of them are heavier than others. Since you're measuring it by weight and this doesn't weigh as much, this got more power in it because I was measuring by weight. Oh my gosh. So it might even be easier to do volume measurements to get the same amount of powder that way, the same volume of powder, even though the powders don't weigh the same amount something to think about. And bottom line, it's kind of one of those things where it's all crapshoot. It depends on your clay body, it depends on your stain, it depends on your, all, all the things. It still just depends on the things. Now, I think that's one of the reasons that you see so many people saying, oh, I just mix it until it looks right. That's kind of the nature of the beast with pottery, right? We just do whatever looks right. <laughs> At least that's what I do. <laughs> I have decanted my colored clay on top of paper, on top of my normal plaster reclaiming slab. If the colors got contaminated, it probably wouldn't bother me all that much. It would drive Tim out of his mind. Yes, I am just going to put them on pots because really, it does not matter what color pink it is, what color yellow it is, or what color green it is, or if it's red instead of pink, or if it's orange instead of yellow, it doesn't matter. Every potter will find themselves at one point or another struggling with the fact that you have to fill an entire kiln in order to see the results of your labor. So that is why, I took this clay and I put it on real live actual pots before I knew what it would do. This is so awesome. And the only thing on this entire thing that has to be painted is the butterfly. <laughs> I wanted to show you, this is bisque fired, the colored clay. That is the uh, pink and what happened to the yellow? This is the yellow. Fantastic. Girl needs some help because this is not pretty. I thought it's okay. It doesn't matter what color green it turns out. Never did I think it wouldn't be green. I haven't even really been able to 
come out here at all. It's been four days since I pulled these out of the kiln. I had to wait that long to stop crying. And my mommy had to come and give me a hug and hold my hand. Green, absolutely brown. Nothing but brown. Crimson, yellow. The clay is just almost yellow all by itself. This is supposed to be blackberry wine. It's brown. This is a different yellow. This is turquoise blue. It's green. It's green. I called the uh, ceramic store where I bought one of the colors and I bought the clay and I don't know why that happened. I don't know why it has to be hard, but sometimes it's just hard. Commence attempt number two. Since the supply store told me they had no idea what I was talking about, I assumed the issue was with the clay, not the stain, so I took some cone six porcelain and other white clays that I had and used those in 100 gram batches for test tiles only. Here we are so far. Um, not very encouraging. However, because I know that other people do it, I must figure out how. out to a couple of people. I met him at a show in Dallas. I met her at the Texas Clay Fest. Um, both of them say use U.S. pigments as a source. Cassie Dilworth particularly suggested I get their sample pack of inclusion stains. Inclusion stains and capsulated stains and body stains are supposed to go to higher temperatures. So, sample pack of the inclusion stains, but where is the blue? No blue. Are you kidding me? Hopefully that means that all blue stains are just not as hard to get. So I went over to masoncolor.com. They have a body stain that is blue called Mazarine Blue. Now I have used Mazarine Blue before in a glaze, taking it to cone six and does beautifully. And Cassie Dilworth had a gorgeous, wonderful, yummy blue in her, um, her booth. Uh, but they don't sell it on U.S. pigments. So again, on Mason Keller's site, I looked at Delft Blue, which is what she uses, and some of the other blues, Delft Blue and Delphinium Blue have the exact same description on their site, except for the picture of the color. And Delphinium Blue is a little darker. Since it had the same description, I went ahead and got some of this too. Um, this is one quarter the cost of the Delft Blue on a, a ceramic store's website. So um, I didn't mind buying so much of it. Um, and of course I bought the Mazarine Blue because it is a body stain and I've used it before. The thing in this whole journey that I am finding the most odd is that I have fired crimson, particularly up to cone six before in a glaze. And it wasn't crimson, but it was pink. Little Street Pottery has a colored clay video and She's using the exact same number crimson that I'm using, and she ended up with a pink in her account. So that another lesson learned about what works 
in somebody else's kiln may or may not work in yours. Period dot. End of sentence. There seems to be no end to that lesson. <laughs> But if I can get a red, a blue, and a yellow, and then go from there, I'm gonna be happy. So that's what we're gonna try to do next. We are all in. <laughs> I will say this for US pigments. Their labeling system leaves a bit to be desired. And all of these ones have the exact same number exact same number and then just an initial as if enough wasn't enough at this point I sat down with the website and I relabeled all of the little baggies so that I would know what I was working with and just as I thought the third time would indeed be a charm I found one last issue to, salt. But to add insult to injury, none of them weigh the same. So this is 18 grams and this is 10 grams. And I think this is kind of the same thing that I was talking about earlier, but you might have the same volume, but it's a different weight. So in order to do what I had planned on doing, which was to test 5%, 10%, and 15% as I was counseled to do, I have to order another batch. That's not actually true, but the math is different. I have since figured out the math, but that's just going to have to go into another video. Okay. I had 15 grams almost exactly of the red, so I have a 5% and a 10% of the red. Um, but the rest of them, I was only able to do either 5 or 10. The lemon yellow only had 9 grams in the baggie. So in order to test at 10%, I've got to have at least two baggies. Uh, the lime, I was able to get a 10%, but I couldn't get a 5 and a 10, so I chose 10. Same with the violet. Here I go again on my own. Third time's a charm, right? Hmm. I chose my Cone 6 porcelain for this test, and you can immediately note how much more vibrant the inclusion stain colors are than the others were. Now, you can kind of see why it's so tempting to go ahead and make pretty little fairy flowers out of all this that's left instead of waiting forever to get this bisked and then fired. Don't do it. Look, I have a new baby. I love her. I love her so much. <laughs> I don't have to wait to fill up the big kiln to test my colors anymore. Because my grandmommy gave me her last Thank you, Grandmommy. The ceramic community will never have another one like you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have colors! <laughs> oh my goodness! So exciting! Uh, this is the delphinium blue. This is the only one that is not an inclusion stain, but yummy. So, as I said earlier, I guess that means that the blues are not that hard to get. This 10%, this is 5% on the red, and it's just 
red. These are two different yellows, lemon yellow on the top, mango on the bottom. Uh, very almost imperceptibly different. This one's at 5% and this one's at 10%. So probably if this one was 10%, I would see a little bit more of a difference. But two good yellows and two good greens. Two different colors of green. This is lime green and this is just their green inclusion stains. So you can totally, see, you can see the difference there. And both of these are at 10%. Finally, the only one of the first tests that didn't give me what I, a full on color that I thought was right was the violet. And this is at 10%. I'm gonna go ahead and bump that up to 15% and see what we can't do about that because it is giving us some violet here uh, after the glaze. It's just so very, very faint. Um, but the unglazed, it just looks gray. I mean, it looks gray, which is better than brown. So we're making progress in some elements. <laughs> Uh, moving forward, we will be testing these at, um, like I probably won't test this one at 5%, but I probably will test it at 15%. I want to see both more and less of the green. I'd kind of like to see if I can't just dilute this one into a pink. Right now it's at 5%. What does it do at 2%? Um, so moving forward, be finding out all of those things. Woo! It has been a journey. In the meantime, I hope that I have saved you just a little bit of the painstaking process. That's not so painstaking anymore. Of color clay. <laughs> have a good one, you guys. Thanks for coming. Now in her 90s, Grandmommy is still creating. Her house is a museum of her art, and ceramics is the tip of the iceberg. Thanks for the memories, the inspiration, and the kilns. What you don't want to do is get these colorants mixed up with, say, your cobalt, if you know what I'm saying. It means I need to be a little bit more precise, but seeing as how in practice I know I am not going to be any more precise. Uh <laughs> Reclaim hair. So now what? My scale does not work outside in the studio, but inside it works just fine. And I'm going to cry really hard if it doesn't work. Yes, tears flowed freely in the making of this video in both sorrow and joy. So subscribe to see the fruits of this journey and so much more. Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a great week.